Hello. Welcome to the Diversion Class for Prostitution, put together by Sex Workers Anonymous. Here we go. Class 2 for Prostitution Diversion. Uh, also, contact us for the written form uh, to get enrolled in the whole, whole procedure, to get credit, all that. This is just giving you an idea what some of the class materials are like in the, in the class. Okay, class two. To us wondering why someone drinks isn't going to have much impact on stopping their drinking permanently. Anyone can stop anything for a period of time, but changing one's lifestyle requires a different process entirely. One where why doesn't have to lo a lot to do with things at this point. What we're going to look at, first of all, is you can't stop something unless you first understand what it is you're stopping. Now, people agree that intercourse for money is prostitution. However, the sex industry is a very large place and takes many forms. The alcoholic doesn't just stop drinking. They must not put any alcohol in their body. That includes things like mouthwash, medicines that have an alcoholic base, candy or cakes which have alcohol in them that has not been burned off, or anything else ingested which can have alcohol in them no matter how small. Some people even say that non-alcoholic beer is off limits because that does have a tiny amount of alcohol in it. The body doesn't know the difference, so all forms of alcohol need to stop entering the body for them to find sobriety. So let's look at the many forms that sex work takes. This includes stripping, pornography, webcams, phone sex, prostitution, madaming, and even pimping. Does this involve working as a dominatrix? In this field, you're dressing up in leather, heels, etc., and you're performing a fantasy session for another person where you're physically or verbally abusing them or dominating them for money. It is not always sexual. It is extremely possible to work as a dominatrix or submissive without any sexual contact at all. However, does this fall under the heading of sex work? If you don't feel it does, explain how it can be a profession that's not sex work. For example, a sexual surrogate is not engaged in sex work but is instead a therapist. Is a dominatrix the same as a sexual surrogate, however? Stripping requires... Oh, lost my place here. Stripping requires you be partially or totally nude. It does not require any physical contact with your client, not require it. In fact, you're forbidden to have physical or sexual contact. To the client, however, you are viewed as a sexual object, and he or she is paying you for this role. Yet there are stages in Las Vegas where the dancers are topless, like the Follies Bruget. Where is the line between being a stripper working in the sex industry versus a dancer who may be dancing nude or nearly nude on a stage? Calvin Klein is known for sexy ads where the models are nearly naked. Brooke, Brooke Shields posed in a Calvin Klein ad where she poses and says, nothing gets between me and my Calvin Kleins in a sexual manner. If you're asked to book a job as a model for a company like Calvin Klein, where you're going to be nude and paid for that job, is that considered sex work? What's the difference between posing nude for Playboy or Hustler versus a Calvin Klein ad for a product like one of his jeans where the model is topless. Sites like Sugar Baby or Ashley Madison are forms of being in the sex industry. Being paid by the week or month makes no difference between being paid for the act or by the hour. Calling in an affair or girlfriend experience instead of prostitution does not make a difference. If alcohol is in a bottle marked mouthwash, it's still alcohol and must not be consumed by the alcoholic. Therefore, any form of any sex for any form of money is considered sex work. Even if to pay is gifts you're placed, you've placed on your wish list, it's still a form of exchange for a form of sex of some kind. Webcam work, phone sex, or other electronic forms of sex, simulated sex, etc., for money are still work in the sex industry, even if you're not having physical intercourse. So for this class, I want you to think of three other methods where you could be working in the sex industry, however, without prostituting physical intercourse for money. This includes forms of payment other than cash. For example, if you trade a drug dealer a blowjob for drugs, that's considered working within the sex industry. Having a landlord who comes by on the first of the month for sex in exchange for your rent is another form. Any form of sex 
or type of sex for any type of exchange, even that of a service, is considered, quote, working within the sex industry by the very definitions set down by Sex Workers Anonymous. This includes both legal and illegal forms of sex. For the addict, their drugs can be legally prescribed, as well as alcohol is legal, too. Here's a point to consider. Bodybuilders have fans who book appointments with them in their rooms after a show where they engage in body worship of the bodybuilder in exchange for pain for this time. Sometimes the client gets a sexual release from this session. Does this mean they're engaging in a form of sex work, however? I know of a nightclub owner who invites pretty girls down to his club where the women get free food and drinks based on being nice to the clientele. Is this a form of sex work? A man called us once who was a strip club owner. He had owned clubs all of his life since he was 19 years old. He owned two clubs when he called. Evidently, it was beginning to bother him what he was seeing happen to the dancers. He said he, quote, couldn't stand watching these women self-destructing before his eyes anymore and knowing that he was contributing the stage to watch this play out. So he turned around and shut down both clubs one day, locked them up and shut them down. Then he went into a complete panic because he had no idea what he was going to do instead of owning clubs as a career. He starts attending our meetings of Sex Workers Anonymous, and some people argue that he didn't belong. What are your thoughts on this? So here's the assignment. One, write out different ways that you've engaged in sex work in your past. Two, now write out three different ways that you can think of to engage in sex work that has not been listed in this section. That includes working with other people in the industry, such as being a madam. You're not having sex, not even meeting the client, but you are involved in the sex industry when you do this job. This class is to help show you the line of where that first transaction is not to cross in order to remain abstinent according to the definition of sex work. That is the end of class two.